Hello fellow sim racers, and welcome to part 5 of this sim racing setup guide in which we're discussing springs. If you've not seen the first 4 parts then a link to a playlist containing all of my setup videos should be in the top right hand corner of your screen. As I mentioned back in the first part of the series, it's important to think about setup changes as part of a wider system, and to keep in mind how a change to one component may impact the rest of the car. This is especially important when it comes to springs, as they both impact and are impacted by ride height, anti-roll bar settings and aerodynamic changes. In a road car, the suspension is designed to be a compromise between handling and comfort, but in a race car, we really only care about performance. If you recall from the first video, I mentioned that the rule of thumb is that softer suspension setup generally means more grip. And while that's true in isolation, it becomes much more complex when you start to factor in other variables like load, ride height, track surface, and crucially, the impact of aerodynamic downforce. So, when determining what spring rates to run, there's a lot to consider. And by changing the springs, you can make some really quite drastic alterations to the way the car behaves. A moment ago, I mentioned spring rate, Simply put, that's the force needed to compress a spring by a specified amount. In Imperial, that's a measurement of pounds per inch, and in metric, it's kilograms or newtons per millimetre. For sim racing purposes, the number doesn't really matter, and all you really need to know is that the bigger the number, the stiffer the spring is. You may also see reference to wheel rate. This is essentially the force needed to compress the entire suspension assembly by a specified amount. In simple terms, it's the compressive force of the spring after you take into account the leverage of the suspension assembly. The overall stiffness of your suspension setup is impacted by the load that's placed upon it, and heavier cars generally need stiffer springs. You also need to take into account the load placed on the springs by aerodynamics, but more about that later. Generally speaking, spring rates should also reflect the car's weight distribution. So, for example, a front-wheel drive car with a 60-40 weight distribution will need stiffer springs on the front than on the rear. As a rule, we want to run our cars as close to the ground as possible. Not only does it look better, but a lower centre of gravity is a massive help when it comes to cornering. And those pesky aerodynamics we keep talking about usually work best at very low ride heights. Generally speaking, running a car lower means higher rated springs. So, bear in mind that if you reduce the ride height, you may need to increase the spring rate to stop the car bottoming out over bumps. Modern circuits are often blessed with billiard table smooth asphalt, but some older venues can be a bit more, um, characterful. On a smoother track surface, you'll be able to run a lower ride height and stiffer springs, but on a more bumpy track, that may not be the case. And don't forget about the curbs, they count as bumps too, at least as far as your suspension is concerned. This is where things can get a little bit more tricky. When it comes to cars that rely on aerodynamic downforce, there are two things to consider. First of all, to keep the aerodynamics working efficiently, it's critical to maintain a very stable ride height. And secondly, aerodynamic downforce applies more load to the suspension. We'll be talking about aerodynamics in a later video, so don't worry too much about the specifics. For now, it's enough to know that a car that generates a lot of downforce will need to be set up with stiffer springs than a car that relies entirely on mechanical grip. Something else to consider is that some modern high aero cars have what's known as a third spring or heave spring. This is an additional spring in the suspension setup that's only compressed or relaxed when the car is subjected to pitch changes. By running a stiff heave spring and softer wheel springs, this allows the car to be set up incredibly rigidly from a perspective of pitch, but still be compliant enough to keep the tyres in contact with the ground during roll movement in the corners. Because of how the anti-roll bars and springs interact, I try to mentally separate the two. Ideally, I try to use the anti-roll bars to alter the balance of the car during cornering, as they only resist lateral roll. This leaves the main springs as a tool to adjust how the car maintains ride height, pitch, as well as how it navigates bumps and curbs. However, the two are inexorably linked, and it's important to understand the knock-on effect that comes with altering spring rates. In a non-aero car, I'll often try to lower the spring rate equally on all four corners to see if it'll provide more grip without negatively impacting the handling. If the car starts to bottom out, then I've gone too far. In an aero car, it's certainly worth trying, but if you start to feel a loss of grip at high speed corners, it's usually a sign that the aerodynamics are no longer working efficiently. You can also use spring rate adjustments to alter the balance of grip. 
If you soften the springs at the front of the car, your front tyres will have more grip, pushing the car towards a more oversteery balance. If you soften the springs at the rear, then you'll move towards a more understeery balance. And of course, the inverse is also true. So, if you find that anti-roll bar adjustments aren't getting you the desired results, I would then consider altering the spring rates at one end of the car. But be aware of the knock-on effect that may have on the rest of the setup. It's very easy to start chasing your tail. So that's about all I have to say about springs. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the black magic that is dampers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you think the video will be helpful for others, then please consider sharing it. As always, thank you for donating your precious free time by watching. It is very much appreciated. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thank you for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.